we're still sharing in a mystery. We're still sharing in something that can never be understood. But I have to say that understanding is the least important thing here. The thing that, that is happening here is beyond words. It's energetic. So whatever we're talking about today is a vehicle for something that's energetic that's going on. And um, it's, a, it's a mystery because, because we're talking about an energy which is both empty and full. An energy which is everything and nothing. And those things are not apart. Everything is nothing. Emptiness is fullness. So this can't be understood. And although we will share in concepts that, that come and go, and then some of those concepts are meeting quite a radical um, proposal or perception, it's possible that some old belief systems might unravel. But that's the least important thing of all. Uh, in fact, what's the least powerful thing of all? The most, uh, the most powerful thing is, is the energy that is shared with all of us in that openness that is available when, there's, when, when the whole uh, idea of getting anywhere is no longer important. So all there is is boundless energy. It's boundless. It has no intention. It has no agenda. It just is. It is all and the all and everything. And there's nothing that it has, no, it has no intention or agenda. As I said, it's not trying to get anywhere. It simply is. What is happening right now is that boundless energy. And that boundless energy um, can also be free. Well, it is free. It's utterly free. But it can also be uh, contracted. It can be anything it likes. It has no agenda. As I said, there's no God trying to run it. There's no consciousness trying to influence it. All of those things only arise in the story. But when that boundless energy is free, uh, it, can, it can, as I say, become anything it, it, that arises. And what also can arise is a contracted, a sense of contracted energy. And in the tiny child, when it's born, it's born without any sense of identity and it has any sense of it being anything and it, it's boundless in that in that way it's a, it's a boundless energy but after about a year or two uh, I, in that boundless energy a, a sense of contraction arises in the body it suddenly arises and it, it creates a sense of a center in the body and, and it feels as though there is something there suddenly there's something there and out of that uh, event arises self-consciousness. Self-consciousness arises at that moment and, the, the, and from that self-consciousness there comes a sense of there being someone. Suddenly after a year or two or three or more there's a sudden sense of an identity. Um, at that moment that, that sudden sense of identity arises that what also arises with it is a feeling of separation. So in the identification comes separation from everything that's outside. It's as though suddenly that energy is in the body and everything that's happening outside is happening to that, that sense of, of the identity. That's the feeling. That's the feeling in the body. That's the uh, experience. Because now, of course, there's an, uh, there's an individual that's arisen that's separate. Also what arises is personal experience. And so the individual experiences everything through a veil of separation. And the individual never really sees the sky, never sees a tree, never sees another person, never sees anything other than as an object outside itself. So it's constantly, constantly as it grows up, living in that sense. It's constantly living in that sense of being separate from everything, apart from everything. It's a very powerful sense. The other thing that arises in that feeling of being individual is the feeling of being real. That is another very powerful uh, uh, energy that arises in, in the body and in the story of the person. So the feeling I am real begins. The story I, the story I am, the I am story is what happens. And out of that I am story, 
uh, of feeling real also arises the feeling that I have a story, it's real, it has meaning and it has purpose and I have a free will and choice to influence that story whichever way I want. But of course it's living it all the time in the experience of what's happening. It's having personal experience, it's living in personal experience. And it's constantly looking for better and better experiences, another experience to replace this experience another experience to replace that experience. This is a constant need in the individual to have good experiences. So actually directly separation begins and the feeling of apartness begins. What also comes with all of those things is a, a seeking energy, a seeking to have better experiences, but more than anything else, a seeking to end seeking because the feeling of separation is somehow disturbing. Many people won't necessarily recognize that, but that's under, underneath everything that's going on in their lives is a feeling of dissatisfaction with being separate, but not be, with not being life, but being apart from life and a part of life rather than just being life. So seeking begins and inevitably we all know that out of that seeking, that that hunger arises something to satisfy that hunger in terms of religions and all sorts of other ideas and teachings that um, come out of the mind, come out of the intelligence and come out of the need. And uh, those, all of those teachings are speaking to a person and they're based on the idea or the belief, the erroneous belief, that somehow that person has lost something. And the, teach, the teachings that are around and the religions that are around are an attempt in the dualistic world to help the person find what they're looking for. And that, that takes on so many guises, it puts it impossible to encompass the, the energy of that teaching and the energy of that seeking. It goes on and on and on. What you see in the world today is people trying to have better and better experiences and trying to find satisfaction. And the reason that there's so much frustration in the, in the world today and there's so much upheaval is because the, the individual trying harder and harder through its own dualistic perception to find that which has never been lost. So that's basically what we're talking about here. What is it that people think they've lost? What is it they try to do to find what they lost. And is there something else unspoken that's absolutely beyond all of that futility?